Why should you care about a cup and handle formation happening on the charts? Gary Wagner will tell you why. Chart This is up next. Hi, Gary. Nice to see you. Pleasure to see you this morning, Daniela. And how are you today? Fantastic, Gary. And I'm happy to see you, but I just don't know where to start. And I'm sure our viewers are happy to see you as well to help make sense of everything right now. We're, we're post-election. So what do we do with ourselves now? Well, you know, I mean, first of all, we're experiencing what I call the Obama bounce. And, and really what that is, is the thought was that if Obama would become reelected, it would signal a furthering of quantitative easing. Bernanke would stay full term. Of course, he said he's not going to come back, but he'll stay full term. And so the idea is that we should see some sort of a short term, at least rise in gold. If Romney got elected, they were expecting that to be bearish. The day before the election, of course, on Monday, the market started going up and Tuesday, it really flew up. And, and that's that short term effect, the Obama bounce. Right, Gary. And that's really echoing the point of view that I've heard from most analysts about this Obama bounce and how it's good news for the metals. But I was speaking to some uh, analysts recently at the New Orleans show I was at, and they were they were saying that they could see the U.S. dollar strengthen now, and that could hurt gold. And some were even predicting the metal could fall to 1450. What do you think about that possibility of a correction? You know, that's a that's fairly low in terms of my analysis right now. And of course, I'm a pretty staunch Elliott Wave technician. We are in what's called a wave two correction. The wave two correction, of course, has been taking prices lower. That's where we saw the market going from about 18 to when it, it hit that bottom. We are now in what's called a counter wave or that B wave. And that B wave could propel us as high as uh, 1760. But we might, in fact, after that, have one more bounce down. I don't think it's going to be that low. My lowest numbers were around 1635 if it got to that point. And at that point, we should enter the impulse phase, which should take us above 1800 again. Right, Gary. And one analyst I spoke to said if we don't see gold really rally with Diwali, which is taking place this week, the festival season in, in India, that would be a bad sign for gold. Well, absolutely. The, the, the Indians account for so much physical gold buying during their, their festival and all of the weddings that are going on. I know I was invited to two of them already. I don't think I'll make it to India. I wish I could. But yes, if we don't see a bounce from that, there's definitely some issues. And when you do speak about these corrections, Gary, what could be the cause behind them? Well, you know, on a technical basis, it's one thing. Fundamentally, uh, this market's been driven by that strong U.S. dollar. And it's the dollar that is really uh, the soundboard to any kind of downside pressure we've seen in gold. All right, Gary, let's get to your segment now. I believe you prepared something on a cup and handle formation. It's, it's going to be an interesting topic, and in fact, it's, it's on confluence, and confluence is simply where two different technical indicators come to the same conclusion. And the cup and handle is a unique uh, pattern group and pattern itself that was first developed by uh, Mr. O'Neill, William O'Neill, which is the uh, founder of Investors Business Daily. And what I found is that when you overlay the results that that predicts with Elliott Wave, you get a very, very similar read on the market. So today we're going to really go into a little bit of detail about a cup and handle, how it's created, what it means and what it will signal in the future. And Gary, if you could just hold up your mug for a second for our viewers. My mug? OK. Right. I just want to show that when we do speak of the handle, we're not referring to a handle that looks like an actual cup handle. Yeah, it's not going to be circular. You'll see in the video, but what it is is you have the U shape, which forms a cup, and then you have a channel down, which is the current retracement that we saw just before it popped up. Sounds great, Gary. Let's get to it. Today, I want to take a look at a couple of specific patterns that we have identified within the gold market. Most importantly, I want to talk to you about confluence. And simply put, confluence is when you have different technical indicators which come to a similar conclusion or agreement with each other. We're looking at a daily chart. This daily chart is in standard candlestick format. It is of the cash or spot market of gold. And on that, I've put a couple of things, uh, Elliott Wave along with Fibonacci retracement. And as we take a look at this market, 
of course, this is the last huge move that it made to really the all-time record top right here at about 1920. And that happened, of course, last year, 2012. Excuse me, 2011. It's hard to believe that 2012 is almost over. At that point, what we saw was a an elongated correction in which we had a series of tops in the market at about 1800. And so we call this really a, a descending top and pretty much a flat bottom. But it was what was considered to be a, a corrective triangle. And when I say corrective triangle, what I'm talking about is compression. And what I mean by compression, it's a series of as this market trades a series of lower highs and typically you'll get higher lows in this case you've got the flat bottom in essence when we look at this breakout and this breakout right here to me is the indication that we absolutely broke out of that corrective period and so my count looks something like this in Elliott wave of course what you're looking at is a series of five waves and those five waves themselves are going to be wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and then a fifth wave. So of these five waves that we are looking at, three of them are going to be impulse and two of them are going to be corrected. So I've kind of really filled them in and, and as you can see, so you have wave one impulse, two corrective, three impulse, four corrective, and then five is your final impulse. Following that, you'll get you'll go into the corrective cycle, which is typically an ABC pattern. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because currently we've identified the fact that this is our major count, that at this top, this 1920 here, where we were within the, the grand scheme of things is right here, meaning you're going to have one large corrective wave, a wave four, and then a final impulse push or wave five up. And why that's important is as follows, because I believe that we have just completed our corrective wave, our major fourth, that's right here, and we have begun a impulse cycle, and that impulse cycle is a major fifth. That major fifth, of course, will be composed of waves one, two, three, four, three, four, and five. So in terms of identification of where we are in the current trend, and I think that that is one of the most important things we can try to accomplish, I believe that we're currently, we have completed wave one, and right now we're either in or we have completed wave two to this corrective wave and the good news is for gold bulls like myself that once we complete this corrective wave two we're going to go into a third wave and that third wave will most certainly take out this triple top this eighteen hundred dollar mark now i don't think it will take a real stab at the record high until we go through three four and then five so traders, this is really to me where it gets interesting. Once again, let's go back to confluence. There is another pattern which has been identified, which is simply called a cup with handle. And let me try to show you what I mean by that. In essence, a cup with handle is composed of basically five components. Your first component is the market moves and goes to a new high price but cannot sustain that price. And what happens is over an elongated period of time, it corrects, it forms a bottom, a rounded bottom, and the secondary thing that you will notice is you then get a cup. From that cup, you would then get a handle. In other words, you'll get a high that is equal to the beginning of the cup and you can see that right here or a double top in this case it's a triple top of course and then you get your handle your handle is where the market once again corrects and so here you have your cup and your handle now the idea behind this particular pattern of course is that once that market consolidates this is the handle you will get a break and that break will take you above the prior top 
right in here. And that in essence is a cup and handle. And you can see when I superimpose the actual model of a cup and handle, it looks very, very similar. So how do these two go together? Well, we know that within the cup and handle, and this actually was created by William O'Neill, the founder of Investors Business Daily, but the interesting thing about this pattern is that it is signaling a pretty sizable breakout to the upside and that will really be identified of course once we break above this triple top which is 1800 the fact that we have this pattern which is acknowledging and looking for an upside breakout and the fact that in terms of our Elliott wave count we are either close to or concluding we might have one leg down still in the actual wave count something like an A, B and then a C and then our final thrust up. But in either case, both of these particular pattern groups, one developed by Elliott Wave, the other by O'Neill, are signaling higher prices and are signaling that this market in fact could go break above 1800. My personal sentiment of course is that's only our intermediate wave three. We will have a wave four and then we'll conclude it with new price highs as the impulse wave goes to wave five in our Elliott wave count. Elliott wave, cup and handle. It is my current belief that we're really, really at the beginning of, of some very, very exciting times within the precious metals markets. And I think we're gonna see much higher pricing in the weeks and months to come. You know, as Kitco viewers, for the chart this series, it's important to me to provide as much information as I can. And I always try to give you a little bit of an additional bonus content. This week is no different. I've just put up on the screen what our website looks like, thegoldforecast.com. And if you notice, I'm going to circle it right now. There is this little image, a little copyright C. Go ahead and click that and that will allow you to view the bonus content for this week. I am going to include the weekend review and in that way, you will get a real good idea of how we actually put all of these ideas together in a real-time scenario. Gary, as always, uh, very informative. Thank you. And I guess it's safe to say you're still bullish on the gold market. Absolutely. I think that long term, long term, we're going to see it uh, challenge the 1800 because we don't have a triple top in place. Once that's challenged, I do believe, as I've said before, over the longer term period, meaning the next, say, four to six months, we will probably see it attempt to take out the highs of 1920. I think we're going to 2000. And that's within what time frame, Gary? February, March. Well, we'll see if that pans out, Gary. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Have a great day. And thanks for watching this installment of Chart This. You can email me at newsfeedback at kiko.com or better yet, tweet me at Daniela Cambone. Thanks for watching.